Hi, I'm Pastor Gavin Beers and I'd like to talk to you about the Gospel and Honest Work. The Gospel is the glorious message of how God has redeemed sinners in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He redeems us and sets before us the hope of heaven, but He also renews us and sends us out to serve Him in the world. Paul often implicitly makes that point in his letters and how he structures them. He begins with Christian doctrine and the glory of the gospel, and then he moves to practical application of the gospel to our life. He does this in the epistle to the Ephesians, where in chapters 1 through 3, he sets before us the gospel and brings us to appreciate the love of Christ in its breadth and depth and length and height. And in chapter 4, he begins to apply that in verse 1, telling us that we are to walk worthy of the calling that we've been called with. In the middle of the chapter, he says, we're to put off the old man, which is corrupt, and put on the new man, which is renewed after the image of God. When he begins to apply that to different areas of our life, in verse 28, he tells us that it should affect how we view work. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. God appointed work in the beginning when he made man in his image. But sin changed our relation to that work in a number of ways. First of all, work got harder. Adam would work the earth, but the, work, the earth would fight against Adam. But then our attitude to work would also change. Some people today are workaholics. But our text emphasizes that some people are lazy. People refuse to work, preferring to steal, to make a living in a sinful way. And Paul's point here is that that has to change and that it will be evidence that the gospel has changed us. So the first message of our text is stop stealing, which obviously applies to theft and all gain that you would get in that way. People can steal when they take that which doesn't belong to them. They might rob a bank or a house or something like that. But you can also steal when you refuse to work and make yourself dependent upon the provision of others. Or you can steal when you're employed but you don't work hard for your employer, rather you steal his time and thus his money. So the first message is stop stealing. The second is start working. And there are three principles in the text here that help govern our work in this world. I trust that these are principles that will help at all, all times, but they're also principles that might help at this time of crisis when people have lost their jobs or maybe their job is under threat. It's also, these are also principles that will help maybe young people who are considering what they're going to do with their lives. God's not going to come and whisper in your ear, I'm calling you to be a construction worker or an IT analyst. You have to weigh up your gifts and abilities and opportunities in God's providence. The first principle here in the text is honest work. You are not to work in anything that requires you to break God's law. The work according to Paul here must be good as defined by God. And so certain industries will be closed to a Christian and some jobs or companies in other industries will have to be avoided because their moral practices violate God's law. But that being said, all honest work is lawful for a Christian to pursue and indeed a duty that lies upon us to pursue. The second principle is hard work. Paul uses two words for emphasis. Let him labor working with his hands. And the first of these words means to feel fatigued. So he's clearly wanting us to understand that the work must be hard. Sometimes we're going to wonder, what will I do? How will I make a living? What, what am I going to do about qualifications? It's good to remember that this is the chief qualification that God rewards. Work hard and pray that the Lord would bless and honor that work. Employers love such employees and they often advance and gain promotion and constantly add new skills. The third principle is helpful work. It is right that we think of work as a means to provide for our own needs, but it's more than that. 
Today, the extra is often viewed as disposable income to fund a certain kind of lifestyle. But in verse 28, the extra is viewed in relation to others. Stop stealing, start working, not only that you might provide for yourself, but that you may have to give to him that needs. This is one way that Christians can serve God. Maybe you've wondered if I'm not called to be a minister or a missionary, how can I serve the Lord? Well, here's an answer. Work hard, increase your salary, but not so that you might live unto yourself, but that you might serve God in the service of others. You can help those in need, you can give to the church, you can support struggling pastors and church planters, or you could fund missionary work. So the gospel governs your attitude to work and your attitude to its rewards. Stop stealing, stop shirking, start working. Hard, honest work to the glory of God and to the service of others. If you want to learn more about this, you could look up the Westminster Shorter and Larger Catechism or the Heidelberg Catechism Question and Answers on the Fourth and Eighth Commandments.